On January 4, 2011, Elizabeth Ennin, 15, was a typical spunky teenage girl wedged between a younger brother and older brother. She was described to have the sweetest demeanor yet also sass and wit when needed. Her interests included everything that a teenage girl would usually gravitate toward. Cell phones, makeup, and hair. In addition to those interests, she had a talent in dance and singing. However, she was shy about her voice and was hesitant to sing publicly. She was just blossoming into a teenager and hoping to take on more responsibilities. Therefore, she accepted a babysitting job for a family that her mother was cordial and familiar with, the Salinas family. Elizabeth hoped to compile enough money together to buy her older brother a nice birthday present. She was an extremely selfless girl. The plan for the night was for Elizabeth to be dropped off at a hotel to babysit the Salinas children. The Salinas family was temporarily staying in a hotel as they looked for a house to purchase. She was expected to babysit for a few hours and then be dropped back off at her home around midnight. However, the plan didn't follow along as expected. Humberto Salinas Jr., also referred to as Bert, showed up at the Ennin residence with Elizabeth's distinctive purse. He claimed she left it at their hotel after he dropped her off at her front door 15 minutes earlier. Elizabeth's mother, Virginia, grabbed the purse in confusion because her daughter never made it home. The confusion evolved into panic when she realized her young daughter was missing. Virginia immediately called authorities to see if they could assist with the search. Bert sat by her side being a supportive and mutually concerned family friend. When the police arrived, they hinted at the idea that Elizabeth could have ran away from home. They persisted that she wait 24 hours before filing a missing persons report and left, but her mother knew she wouldn't have left without her purse and cell phone. The next morning, Virginia called the police to say Elizabeth was still missing. From there, they retraced her steps back to being with Bert and wanted a detailed interview with him. According to Bert, he picked up Elizabeth around 6 p.m. and she babysat his children while he played bingo with his wife. Then he dropped her off at her home around 1.30 a.m but realized on his way home that she left her purse. He turned around to return it, and there, Virginia noticed her daughter was missing. Initially, Bert's story seemed truthful and his demeanor did portray a worried friend. During the brief search for Elizabeth, Bert even helped her mother place her missing posters around the city. However, the surveillance footage inside of the hotel completely changed the path of the investigation. Police retrieved the CCTV footage from the night Elizabeth was babysitting for Bert. At 10.45 p.m., Bert was captured walking back toward his hotel room where Elizabeth was babysitting his children. An hour later, the footage showed Elizabeth scurrying out of the hotel room holding her purse. Her body language appeared to be intimidated and in a rush to leave. Seconds later, Bert followed behind her and escorted the scared teenager back into the hotel room. Eight minutes later, Bert and Elizabeth exited the room once again and walked down the hallway. Suddenly, Elizabeth tried to turn a different direction to escape from his grip and find help, but Bert easily overpowered her and forced her to walk to the parking lot. Investigators brought Bert in for another interrogation, but this time the suspicion against him was amplified by multiple levels. At first, he adamantly denied seeing Elizabeth after he dropped her off, but once he learned detectives had important video footage in their possession, he sat in silence. Tears fell from his face as he admitted to killing Elizabeth by strangling her. After his confession, he cooperated with investigators and led them to her decomposed body by guiding them to a ran-down area of the city full of abandoned buildings. She's right here man. Just go straight ahead. Straight ahead, Bert directed officers as they pulled up to the exact area behind a shed. The responsibility of notifying Virginia was left to three detectives. As they arrived, she backed away from them already anticipating the news. When it was confirmed, she collapsed on her porch and said, No, I'm supposed to go first, not my daughter. Detectives believe that Bert came back to the hotel room at 10.45 p.m. while under the influence and tried to sexually assault Elizabeth. When she tried to run, Bert knew he had to kill her to cover his actions. On April 5, 2012, Bert pleaded guilty to capital murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. You teach your kids to be aware of strangers, but when it's somebody you know, and you trust, your kids trust, it's like the last ones you would ever dream would be able to do something so horrible, Virginia Annan said.